you know. I do a shitload of reading and studying and praying, and I've come to a few conclusions I want to share. People look at politicians and celebrities on the TV and the newspapers, glossy magazines. What do they see? I'm just like them. That's what they say. I'm special. I'm different. I could be any one of them. Well, guess what? You can't. You know why? Because in reality, mediocrity is where most people live. Mediocrity is the elephant in the room. It's ubiquitous. Mediocrity in your schools, it's in your dreams, it's in your family. Those of us who know this, those of us who understand the disease of the dull, we do something about it. We do more because we have to. The deck was always stacked against us. You're either a big leaguer or you're a slave clawing your way onto the sea train. Some people say Jack Abramoff moves too fast. Jack Abramoff cuts corners. Well, I say to them, if that's the difference between me and my family having a good life and walking and using the subway every day, then so be it. I will not allow my family to be slaves. I will not allow the world I touch to be vanilla. You say I'm selfish, fuck you. I give back, I give back plenty. You say I, I got a big ego, fuck you twice. I'm humbly grateful for the wonderful gifts that I've received here in America, the greatest country on this planet. I'm Jack Abramoff, and oh yeah, I work out every day. Schmidt of the Washington Post. Find it all right? Yeah, thanks for seeing me. I got a lot of questions for you. Jack Abramoff, right? I hear he was charging the tribe an exorbitant fee. 30 million or more. So I guess you met his partner, Mike Scanlon, too? Oh yeah, he's a real cowboy. Looks like they might be in some trouble. <laughs> Honey. Jack. Mikey. Hey, uh, I've been calling you all day, dude. Where are you? I'm in L.A. What the fuck are you doing in L.A.? Our world is collapsing here. Wait, what have you heard? Are you going to be indicted? Well, I got federal marshals looking for me, okay? I've had a hundred media calls today. We're under horrific assault from the worst forces in our culture. I know, I know. I, you're the only one who's returned my call. The president's probably destroying every picture he ever took with you. <laughs> well, you're no one in this town until you haven't met us. That isn't funny, Jack. Don't fucking mess with my chi, dude. I'm serious, we are super fucked here. Okay, they're calling us the new Watergate, Jack. We're about to be on the night we do. You need to get back to the game. Step up to the line. Dear Mr. President, I write you this petition with hope and prayers. As a man of faith, I have come to see God move in mysterious ways. After we're born, he gives us the choice of two paths. Please don't smile. I'm not smiling. Accept the world for the way it is. Or see it for how we might want it to be. Turn to your right. Right. To me, the choice was obvious. How long are you going to be holding me here? You can get that information from your lawyer. I do get my own cell, right? And I only eat kosher, okay? You do stir kosher, though. Mr. Abramoff, this is a federal holding facility. It's not kosher. Jack Abramoff. Snake. What are you in for, Snake? Song battery. Resisting arrest. Chicken shit beef like that. How about you? Oh, me. 
I work in DC. I'm a, I'm a lobbyist. Lobbyist? And against the law? God, faith, and country, nothing is more important than influence, political influence. Influence with the powerful is like influence with God. Without it, there's only eternal hellfire, damnation, and congressional logjam. Here, the influence we wield is more important than the air you breathe. As a licensed lobbyist, I am legally allowed to accept money from special interests in order to influence Congress on their behalf. I'm essentially a conduit to motivating sleepy lawmakers into getting bills passed and legislation done. Your client is extremely anxious to know what's in your bill. The reality is, without lobbyists, the wheels of Washington would come to a grinding halt. About how much are you looking to raise for the event? Can you tell me that in dollar terms? Why? Because the most powerful members of Congress rely on lobbyists like me for information to guide them on how to vote. And how they vote sometimes requires taking them on fact-finding missions. Like House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, we brought to the Northern Mariana Islands in the South Pacific, a U.S. territory where my textile clients produce American-made designer clothes without having to pay minimum wage. Well, these folks seem happy. How are you? Uh -huh. I think we should be able to vote favorably on this, Jack. For example, your top-of-the-line stonewashed jeans can stay on sale for $19.95 simply because labor costs in the Marianas remain low. Jack is pushing Mr. DeLay hard to make sure the minimum wage legislation stays off Congress's schedule. Hey, you troglodytes, will you make sure that DeLay gets the latest export numbers from Willie in case the Senate tries to kill this thing? We oui, mon Capitan. Lobbying is nothing more than American-style democracy in action. And the more influence we have, the bigger the smiles on our kids' faces. Good morning, gentlemen. Grover, what brings you to the locker room? Don't even bother trying to pitch him on our new clients. He has issues with helping our Native people. Just with Native Americans, Jack. What do they have to do with Americans for tax reform? I need your help on this one, Grover. I need the congressional friends in your organization to understand that there are certain American Indian tribes that need help. Jack, the United States from day one was founded on the basis that you could be or do anything you want to. You're in charge of your own future. There's no ceiling, there's no floor. You want to be a bum, you can be a bum. You want to accomplish great things, you can do that too. So if some Native Americans choose to live in third world conditions, why is that my problem? Hmm? Those pistachios? Yeah. Genius. Monsieur Jack, listen, this is perfect for you, Grover. It's philanthropic. I mean, the money we're saving them is essentially paying for their health clinics and schools. Help them help themselves. Yeah, come on. There's no one in this town who's as persuasive as you are. You're a Harvard man, dude. Yeah, yeah. The man with the crimson tongue. Grover, all we're trying to do is help these people empower themselves. Jack, I've known you for 25 years. Why do I think your social gravitas is more than just about health clinics and schools? Good Lord would prefer I have deaf ears on this one, folks. <laughs> we all set? Check. 18 holes, St. Andrews, five-star hotel. Hugh Fraser, British Open champ on hand to give a lesson, la di fucking da Restaurant tour of Edinburgh and a two-day stopover at the Hyde Park Oriental in London. Oh, VIP tickets to the Lion King for Tom. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sandbag my drive so Poncho doesn't spew in his shoes with envy. Poncho's been primed. I've arranged to have his picture taken with Bush when we get back. 
three years ago, his tribe is weaving pine needles and selling keychains. Yeah, now all he wants to do is drive a Hummer and buy condos in Hawaii. Can you tell me why these clowns get to own casinos and make 20 mil a year? Well, I don't know, maybe 300 years of genocide, that not good enough reason for you, Chan? Oh, you part Mohawk now? Yes, indeed. Kimasabi, one of the lost tribes of Israel. Yeah, yeah, you're practically an Indian dude. That's probably why they like you so much. That's what I'm talking about. You know what blows my mind? All these Indians are so damn rich and they're still acting like Walmart shoppers. <laughs> He's a multi-millionaire, Jack, with a $10 watch. Just think, if you and I could access some of that liquid, we would be running D.C. In, in no time. You know, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that they pay us a ridiculous amount of money, okay? And then you and I can split the fee 50-50 under the table. It's a little tough on the Chippewa. Uh, not to mention, is it legal? What are they going to do? Cancel my membership at the ACLU? Come well, on. you know, I got a limit on what I can charge. It sucks for you, but I'm freelance, Jack. I'm grassroots, baby. You're always complaining about living hand to mouth. You know what? You deserve better. OK, and Chief Shanks a lot there is our ticket out of hourly fee hell. That's it, Chief. OK. Put together a pitch for Tonto. Let's see what he says. Looks good. Our chief, it's a simple thing. Look, I've handled the Cachatas, the Tiquas, the Aguas, Calientes, and I tell them all the same thing, chief. I know what it feels like to be a persecuted minority. Yeah, well, it's about time you guys in Washington finally did something good for Indian people. Like give America back? <laughs> you got a real sense of humor, Jack. I like that. Look, the casino is a plus if it's profitable. But in reality, the gaming industry is very competitive. You know the Jenna tribe, they want to open up their own casino now. They're just one state away. Yeah, and I know those guys. They can be brutal. They can shut you down mega fast. No more Chippewa Casino. You need our help, Chief. Mm -hmm. You heard Mike's proposal? It's a tough call. It's a hell of a fee you're asking for. Kind of a record, isn't it? But think of the billions that you're going to save. I can guarantee you that goddamn Genotribe Casino will never open. And before you know it, the Genotribe's gonna be back selling moccasins. You know, Mr. Abramoff, we can't afford to lose this one. You won't. Swear to God. Give it back. A toast to Team Abramoff. Team Abramoff. To giving America back to the Indians. All hail to Washington's biggest retainer. Fucking A, you are no one in this town unless you haven't met Jack Buck. Abramov. Take it easy, Bill. <laughs> Jack, you know Emily, my fiance, oh, everybody sure. from the uh, Bush and Arbor. I'll never forget that night. McCain was in his office pounding bush mills. We love. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice to see the moderates bleed from every orifice. Amen to that. <laughs> hey, Jack. Those Polynesian factories you rep, uh, they make the blue jeans on the Mariana Islands. Yeah, what about them? Word on the street is they're goddamn sweatshops and rape camps. Oh, all you guys in the Washington Post want to be Woodward Bernstein. It's fucking pathetic. That's so? The Labor Department just fined your client nine million dollars. Must be for something. Hey, listen, Ben Bradley, mistakes will happen, but the truth is, you can't tell me those immigrants aren't making more money than they would in China and sending it back to their families. That's right, Scotty. We're just greasing the wheel with American dollars, baby. Capitalism at its finest. <clears throat> Doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Doesn't sound much like American democracy Don't to me. Don't be stupid. No democracy, no fucking capitalism. No capitalism, no fucking democracy. Only goddamn communistic, slave-driven Bolshevism. Thank you, Joe McCarthy. Fucking elite. Oh! Oh! What? Oh my God. You. Scott. Calm down. Someone call 911. Scott is a hemophiliac. We just hit a hemophiliac reporter from the Washington Post. Come on. Great, another bleeding heart. <laughs> Get delay for me, will you? Should I remind him of Bible class Thursday afternoon? Bible class Thursday? Yeah. Jack, remember, I switched it with your golf game. Well, Enid, you know, sometimes even those of us who occupy the Oval Office can have our senior moments. <laughs> yes, Mr. President. Oh, Jack, Mr. Ovellis is here. Make sure I see it before it goes out, okay? Oh, Manny! 
Let's grab a coffee. Hey, listen, if it's about the Lytle incident, no worries. I fired him yesterday. The guy was a loose cannon. It's not like the Post is an important paper in this town. Yeah, can we save this for later? Bear with me. It's important. All right, Manny, so where's the fire? We hired you because the partners felt we needed someone who had friends in the Bush administration. It's not about friends, man. It's about ideas. And you guys on the right used to have ideas. But now that communism is gone, all you think about is money. So did you invite me out for an iced vanilla chai just to remind me that I'm a right-wing fascist? That's kind of beneath you, isn't it, Manny? What's beneath me, Jack, are the clients you drag into my shop. Those bottom feeders and the rag trade in the Mariana Islands. You know, there is an upside for the poor Chinese. They get to send money back to their families in the mainland. And look at all the great work we're doing for the Choctaw, the Chippewa. That all sounds nice and philanthropic, Jack, but you're buddies with the White House. Hell, you're a good reason that idiot cinched the Republican nomination. That's because we destroyed McCain in the South. Bush still owes you. Why not use that? Aim a little higher when bringing in clients. Such as? Such as Fortune 500 company or two. You mean rich white people. Listen, I've got a situation in Florida with a client, a very important client. Now, your background in gaming might help us stick handle it. So, Indians? No, nope. Greeks. Guy in Florida named Gus Kaboulis. Bankruptcy is just the tip of his iceberg. He needs a buyer fast. It's a very lucrative casino lot. If anybody who can afford to get in will get rich. Anyway, Manny said you'd have some clients who might be interested under the circumstances. Yeah, okay, Art, I'll look into it. Kids are asleep, it's late. What? What are you thinking? About us. Seems like only yesterday we were kicking around with the college Republicans. Remember that time you brought Pavarotti to Brandeis? <laughs> Nobody thought you could pull it off. All them lefties listened to the clash. Hey, I like Joe Strummer. Mm, maybe I should have asked him to do a duet with Pavarotti. That would have been something. I still love your dorkiness, huh? Always thinking out of the box. Uh, Adrian. <laughs> Nobody ever went to distance with Creed. You know, if they ring that bell and I'm still standing, and, uh, no, I weren't just another bum from the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> So this character, Gus Boulis, comes down from Canada, opens up a chain of sandwich shops in Miami, then he cashes out, and he goes into the cruise business, buys a fleet full of yachts. So, Boulis turns them into floating casinos, runs out of nine ports. Tourists, retirees, some high rollers, they call it the cruise to nowhere. But there's this Florida attorney general who's got a hard on for gamblers, looking for a technicality to nail this guy. Problem is, Foolis isn't a U.S. citizen, which turns out to be a violation of the Shipping Act of 1916. And then this idiot gets sloppy about how he runs the casinos. He plays fast and loose with the bets. He thinks he's still fooling around with cold cuts. Electric house means. The customer starts to complain. Pretty soon, Foolis is catching heavy grief with his gambling license. The gist of it is, the feds are forcing him to sell. He's got must divest. Gives me a window. Gives you a window. What, are you serious? No, we're serious. 145 million, dude? How are we gonna swing that? We're gonna use our most powerful resource, Mikey. 
my imagination. Well, you better imagine us as rich as the Chippewa, then. So what do you think of Sunsail? How do you think we should handle it? We need a front man. You know, someone strong enough to run a business, but not so strong we can't control him. He needs to have his own money, so he can invest, keep him loyal, honest. You know anybody like that? Prices and graded Bethesda, plus same-day delivery. The principles of the Republican Party more closely parallel the moral vision of the God of Abraham than anyone else. So the question, does God want people to be liquid? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Prosperity enables us to do the right thing to be able to help our fellow man, to be stewards of civilization. In biblical times, taxes never rose above 20%, which is a lesson we could learn today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican Party lights the way for America, and may I say, the rest of the globe. Ralph, really good stuff. Thanks for coming. Inspirational, Jack. Congressman. Jack. Grover. We need to talk. Sure thing, Grover. Stewards of civilization. Beautiful words, Jack. Well, I only take my cue from the most powerful man in Congress. <laughs> you remember Reverend Mueller from my home district in Texas, don't you? Pleased to see you again, Mr. Abramoff. You know, it's refreshing to see both Jews and Christians working together to make this a better world. I'm inspired, Reverend. Carl. Nice to see you, Jack. The president asked me to tell you to come by soon. He's a little help with this golf swing. Uh, happy to. Thanks, Carl. Senator. Yeah. My uh, clients have a uh, substantial check for your campaign. Really? I can't thank you enough, Jack. You know, I'm really lucky to have you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Slow down, you monkeys. Yeah. Be careful with that. See you in the car. Watch your brother, OK, honey? I'm staying my talk. Except for the part where God wants us to be financially liquid. It sounded weird. Oh, I meant abundant. It's, it means power. Remember Exodus 32, the golden calf, the worship of the false idol? Hold the horses. She's quoting scripture to me. Why, Pam Abramoff, when we met, you were reading Cosmo magazine, <laughs> mispronouncing all them Yiddish words. Kavetch, Shlemiel. <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of it. Jack, nice speech. Hey, Adam, thanks for showing up. Wow. Really gone for the whole Jew package. Oh, I thought it made me look more like uh, Don Corleone. More like Fiddler on the Roof. Hey, don't knock Fiddler on the Roof. It was transformational for me when I was a teenager. Made you want to be a milkman? No, made me want to be a real Jew. Good looking family you have. <laughs> Big family you have. Pam, you remember Adam from the College Republicans? Hello. Well, you've done an excellent job raising the youngsters. I'm single again. Swinging bachelor, I guess. Good luck with that. Listen, we need to talk. You can swing by my house on Sunday, we'll have dinner. You mean like a kind of date? What business could you possibly have with a man like that? <laughs> Honey, he's got a law degree from Brooklyn College. He looks like a defendant on Judge Judy. <laughs> Honey, have a little compassion. He's a partner in a casino in San Martin. He's a respectable guy who knows a lot. He can be a very useful partner. Useful for what? In five years, our family will be completely legitimate. Would you please stop it with that? Quoting movies all the time, it's irritating. Oh, come on, honey. You know I love the movies. And I am a Hollywood producer. <laughs> you produced two Dolph Lundgren movies, OK? You work in Washington now. Babe. Washington is Hollywood with ugly faces. I'm serious, Jack. He makes me nervous. And another thing, I mean, how is it that we're late with the mortgage payment? We're okay, aren't we? Oh, yeah, no, this just must be some accounting thing. I'll look into it in the morning. Don't worry. I'll put this on my desk. I'm watching you walk away. Still watching you walk away. 
Walk away some more. <laughs> As we all know, the gaming industry has blown up across America. This phenomenon has given great fortune not only to our tribe, to our people in general, but now we're at risk of losing everything to the competition of our neighboring tribes. Point is, we need help in Washington and we need help now. And as I said in my written statement, Mr. Abramov here has my full support in recommending that he have only the best interests of our casinos at heart. <clears throat> Mr. Abramov, I've uh, read your proposal. I see you want one million dollars just as a retainer to start. Well, you're asking for the best, Mr. Sprague. We are the best. We can get it done. You want to kick some ass on the hill? We can do it. Let's kick some ass. <laughs> that was Dolph Lundgren, not Schwarzenegger, in case you were confused. <laughs> All right, look. Here's my advice. It's free today. You fellows hire Michael Scanlon in Capital Strategies and Ralph Reed here, as some of you may know, at one time was the very famous right hand of the Reverend Pat Robertson. He can organize some high-wattage Christian opposition to this proposed casino by the Jenna tribe, and due to them, what we did to McCain in 2000, wipe him out. You want $30 million in fees over three years. I could be president myself for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much money. The money's worth it. Jack will lobby for us in Washington. He can help make us one of the most powerful tribes in the region. Our people need more health care. We need more education, not influence. Mr. Sprague, you may not think you need influence in Washington, but I'm telling you to have direct access to members of Congress is going to influence how they vote on the very... Oh, speak of the devil, it's the congressional office is calling. It's uh, House Majority Leader Tom DeLay. Excuse me for a moment, everyone. Tom, how's it going? Jack, am I on time? <laughs> Everything is terrific here. In fact, I, I'm with the chip one now. Remind me not to order the tuna from the cafeteria again. Yes, sir. I will uh, remind them of what they're up against, sir. Yeah, and absolutely that they can count on your full support. Great, Jack. I'll see you. Great, Tom. Well, say hi to the president for me. I'll call you when I get back. I'm not bragging when I tell you that we can have effective and direct access to members of Congress on behalf of Screaming Eagle Resort. Otherwise, this beautiful casino that you have here is going to shut down tight and very quickly. In the current climate, we are barely breaking even now. I say the council votes no. Sorry, Mr. Abramoff. I'm going to have to agree. The council votes at 3 o'clock today, Mr. Abramoff. But uh, thanks for coming all this way. Seriously messing with the chi we had flowing. So Sprague is the sub-chief on the council? It's an elected position. Poncho has zero juice, okay? What, what the hell is a ceremonial chief, anyway? Why do we know this before we wasted a hundred grand taking him golfing? How the hell was I supposed to know Poncho was the fucking queen of England? Sprague's gotta go. When's the next council election? You're not talking about messing with the council election, right? Because you know, you're going to be in contravention of the Indian Act of 1968, mister. Well, let me tell you something. They're fucking with our bread and butter, Mikey. I was going to use that money as the down payment on the sun sale opportunity with the Greek. Tell me about it. I just put a huge down payment on this new house I'm buying. What? The DuPont Mansion in Robeth Beach. I told you about it. It's badass. And I've got a lease on a suite at the Ritz-Carlton at this killer pool table. My overhead is insane right now. You haven't paid off your student loans. What do you need with a mansion and a pool table? What? You're buying stuff. Worthwhile stuff. All right, look, just have Grover keep Poncho entertained and let him tell us mega fast when the next election is. Hey, I was in Florida 2000, dude, hanging Chad <laughs> State Troopers. This is going to be a cakewalk. All right? Tiptoe through the tulips. Hi there. Thank you. Be careful there, Mikey. 
she probably still eats her Girl Scout cookies with milk. Jew, I bet you get a lot of cool Christmas cards. Oh, uh, we see our share of nativity scenes. Hey, look at you, macho man. Oh, you didn't know I was a guard at Beverly Hills High? Once knocked a kid ice cold out from Inglewood and made the papers. I bet a lot of guys from Beverly Hills went to the NFL, huh? Know what I majored in in high school? Pool. No, fuck it. Really? How's it feel to get a C in that class? All right, so you've gone from pool to selling mattresses? That's quite an upgrade, Adam. I'm a very successful mattress businessman. Really? Because I hear Quickie Mattresses in Chapter 11. Hey, I sold my franchise for over seven figures and got out. Excellent, because I've got a new fantastic offer for you. Like what? Sunsail Casinos. Offshore gambling? You know who you're dealing with? Greenpeace? Trust me, I know. Adam, think of the fundraising possibilities, all right? It's like Vegas on crack. The boats go out beyond the 12-mile limit. It's an all-cash business. Use your imagination, Adam, because I got plans. Yeah, plans like Bugsy Malone. No, plans like to open up my own private Hebrew school. Public education sucks. You have no idea what my kids have to deal with these days. Your own school? Yeah. Plus, there's my foundation, all the charity work I'm doing. Look, I'm trying to do important stuff that matters for people. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, Jack. I'm starting to see Charlie Manson as my roommate for the next 10 years. This isn't a bunch of native people. You're dealing with sharks here. I'm gonna say no. But thanks for the $65 steak, it's delicious. Adam, just go down to Florida with my business partner, Michael Scanlon, and you guys talk to this Gus Poulos fellow. You're always asking me to give you something. Give me something, give me something. Well, now I'm giving you something, you schmuck. I was thinking something maybe a little less hazardous to my person. I dealt with commies in Nicaragua, generals in Pakistan. I've even dealt with fucking Imelda Marcos. Why should I be afraid of a Greek in mixed sandwiches? What's Imelda like? She likes to play the piano and sing show tunes. Really? Yeah, she's got a pretty decent voice. Jack couldn't be here. He sends his regards. Good You've done well for yourself, Gus. Nice fleet of boats like this, dude. You gotta be a content man. Yeah. Except for the fucking attorney general. Because of him, I need to keep what's left of my sanity. <laughs> so, let's cut the crap. You and Jack plan to pay my price? All right, look. We can give you 20 cents on the dollar. It's the best we can offer, dude. There's no negotiation. You pay my price, that's it. Oh, yes. 
I keep a 10% interest. I run the business. And don't call me dude. You talking to me? Huh? You talking to me? That's your move. You make the move. Huh? Sorry. Jack and his boys watch too many movies. Movies? I didn't invite you here to listen to comedians. No, 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 no. I was. I... Well, you joke with me? Movies? No, no, Fairy no. Tales, I, I... get out! Whoa, 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 fellas. Hey, 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 hey. You come back when you can show my uncle some respect, okay? No, I was just trying to lighten the mood. My luck. Creep stuff. Pick him up. Come on. He doesn't like impressions, right? Fuck. Well, that went well. Fucking idiot. Who doesn't negotiate? I know, I'm telling you, he's a hard ass dude. You watch me put some hot sauce in this fucker's tabbouleh. He's not gonna scare easy. I don't know how the hell you're gonna get him to negotiate. Yeah, well, you know what? Try the Congress in the United States. Bullis will turn around, Mikey, trust me. Hang on. Bob? Yeah, Jack. Listen, I need a favor for a client. Sure, name it. Which tribe are we talking about? No, not Indians, Greeks. Casino gambling in South Florida. I represent the 18th District of Ohio, Jack. It's a bit of a hot potato. Can you deal me a pass on this one? After the money I funneled to you this year, Bob, no, I don't think you get a pass. All right? I need your help. I need it now. Michael sends you the details. Thanks. So there's the casino file. Jack expects to see you on C-SPAN later than Thursday. Tell him he's pushing it. Bobby knows how busy you are with the upcoming fall elections. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, he's organizing a huge fundraiser for you next Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am an ardent supporter of consumer rights. At the heart of my comments today is how certain gaming companies treat their patrons. There are a few bad apples out there who don't play by the rules and who must be uh, weeded, weeded out. One such example is the case of Sunsail Casino and its proprietor, Gus. Yes! 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 You is the man! You is the man! Yes! You is the man! Yes! What's all the noise about, kids? Oh, hey, Manny, we're just working hard finding a buyer for your client. Hey, good. Glad to hear it. Any live ones? Oh, yeah, we're all over it, Manny. No shady ones for the Marianas, okay? Absolutely. I serve this country here and no other. everything we can on this bullet, all right? I want you to call our friends at Fox News and have DeLay hammer Jeb Bush down okay. in Florida. No, never mind. I'll call DeLay myself. He wants me to hook him up with the Harvard College Republicans. <laughs> Thinks I can make him look good in front of all those Ivy League monkeys. Yeah, good luck with that. You know what? He was a pest exterminator in Laredo, Texas, dude. That's going to be a huge challenge in Cambridge. Hey, man, he clawed his way up to majority leader. Now he's got his eyes on the White House. DeLay, are we talking about the same guy here? He's an alcoholic with famous hot tub parties before he met God. What the hell, dude? What the hell was that? Never, Never before has an individual who's been steadfast to our principles risen as high as House Majority Leader Tom DeLay. Tom DeLay is the most effective. I would say he was the most effective whip in the House, and I would say he's the most effective Majority Leader, and thank God Tom DeLay is the Majority Leader in the House of Representatives. And I would just like to add one thing to that, because I'm sure we all want to hear from Mr. DeLay. But Tom DeLay is who all of us hope to be when we grow up. <laughs> Tom? You truly are, my dear. Senator Jarvis, I have a check for you from the Choctaw Indians. <laughs> That's my easy button, Jack. And they want to wish you the best with your campaign. Congratulate and thank each of you for getting involved in politics through young Republicans. What you're doing is commendable and important because as goes politics, so goes our country. Grover. And a weak country cannot provide the world Glad you're on the team. Jack, you know how I feel about freebies. <laughs> Poncho was the third Indian you've made me babysit this month. There is only so much congressmen at Americans for Tax Reform want to be educated about the benefits of Indian gaming. Grover. Well, Grover, 
Or how about we fatten Pancho's donation to ATR, help you out with your operational costs? That'd be a start. I have a hole in my budget of 75K. Ouch. All right, I'll look into it, champ. Meanwhile, where the fuck is your evil elf? My keyboard? He was supposed to take Poncho off my hands three hours ago. You guys want to see something crazy? Bam! A million smackaroos, baby. Give me five. <laughs> How sexy am I to you right now, huh? Very sexy. Right. Are you sure you're not a drug dealer or something, baby? Drug dealer. Um, your lackey's defending you. Jack and I are doing God's work, baby. And <laughs> you don't think the Indian Affairs Committee is going to take issue with all the high fees you've been charging? Since when have you become an expert on Indian Affairs? <laughs> You're not the only one who knows a thing or two about Washington, you know. Those bitches are doing the exact same thing we are, trying to open casinos. They're just jealous? Because they don't make as much as you. You are so right. You don't like? This is high end. <laughs> this is like something you'd find in Southampton, right? Southampton. Have you ever been to Southampton? This is great for Delaware, dude. Right? A little bit of paint here and there. Come Mike, on. have you lost your mind? <gasps> it's a what? A Zamboni. A Zamboni machine for smoothing out the surface of the ice. What ice? The ice for the hockey rink. A hockey rink? see a hockey rink. Well, no, not here. It's being built somewhere else. Honey, look, these are all temporary facilities. It's all part of the new Eshkola Academy and Sports Center that I'm building for all these kids, for our kids. You were serious about building a school? Well, of course. You know how I feel about the education that these kids are getting. A hockey rink. Baby, I thought you'd be happy. I just bought us the biggest house in the whole damn state. It's astonishing, dude. Right? For the Adams family, maybe. 4.5 million? I can't even believe that you would pay money for this, this dumb. Are you kidding me? This place could be like the Playboy Mansion or something, huh? It's all part of the bigger picture, Pam. Philanthropy. The academy, the library, my foundation, the restaurants, the boats, the hotel. It's all going to pay for it. Hotel? Yeah, I'm looking at a property right now. The Chidimachas want to invest with me. Jack, what are you doing? Is this why we are keeping up with our house payment? Honey, think what you want about me, but this is for our kids and their kids. There are priorities here. This is even above board. Joseph Kennedy built up his entire business empire with the help of the Chicago mob. Jack, honey, I love you, and don't take this the wrong way, but you are completely insane. Dude, we're gonna rip this crap out, throw in a sound system, they will hear us from miles, right? A sound system. What about furniture? Lock yourself up, baby. Scanlon. Mike Scanlon? Yo. Susan Schmidt with the Washington Post. Hi. What can I do for you, Susan? Well, I wanted to see if you would comment on that new minimum wage bill the Senate's about to pass with respect to your textile clients in the Northern Marianas. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't believe they have all the votes on that, so... I don't think that bill's going to make it, actually. Uh, I'm also curious about the work Preston Gates does on behalf of Native Americans. We're thinking of doing a report on Indian gaming. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, good luck with that. That should bore your readers to death. <laughs> really? Looks like your Mariana Islands are fucked. Senate passed the bill. Minimum wage is on the way. I'm fucked. Jack said he'd can me if we didn't reach the end zone on this one. Well, I better man up. Go break the news. Try to do that again. <laughs> woo, woo! Nice. What's wrong, Ring Ding? Somebody die? You guys didn't watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Senate passed the bill. The Marianas are fucked. So why the long face? This is great. Okay, yeah. 
Oh, look, let me, let me run it down for you, boy. This is how it works. Do you have any idea how much more money our clients are gonna have to pay us to get that bill killed in the house? In fact, I'm gonna call them right now, tell them they gotta double their retainer. Enid? Sorry to interrupt you all so hard at work. Jack, I need you to see me for dinner tonight. Okay. Enjoy your dinner. The sashimi turo is excellent here. No kidding. Not as good as it's going to be at my new restaurant, though. I just hired a top dollar Tokyo chef. Five stars. New restaurant, Tokyo chef, five stars. How are you feeling, Jack? Perfect. Why do you ask? No reason other than I think you may be suffering from delusions of fucking grandeur. <laughs> I'm going to have to let you go. You violated the firm's ethics policy. We asked you to help Gus Bullis sell his business, not elbow your way in and try to buy it yourself. Your client is difficult. Do you think any buyer out there is gonna to agree to his terms and try to help you out? Help us out, using Adam Kidan as a front man. He's a good guy, he's a respectable businessman. He's bankrupt, he's been disbarred, he's a mob-connected sleazeball. He's told me he has a clean bill of health. Clean bill of health? I'd say he was a cheap, fat whore with the clap. My God, his own mother was whacked. What the hell are you talking about? If you're doing business with this guy, then so are we. You think I want my firm connected with someone like that? And Jack, you know what's even worse? You lied to us. I need you to clean out your office by the end of the month. You're done. You don't think, do you, Manny? You never got me, you never have, you never will. Am I missing some nuance here? Uh, yeah, I'd say you're missing some nuance. You're missing a big fucking nuance. The Wall Street Journal's coming out with a piece called The Super Lobbyist. Do you know what that is? That's me. I'm the super lobbyist. I get paid higher retainer fees than anybody else in this town, and you goddamn well know it. And I'm gonna have a new restaurant. Five stars. <laughs> goddamn stars. Anything else? I love my kids. I work out every single day. You're gonna come out the losing end of this one, Manny. You're gonna lose every single one of those Indian tribes as clients. And you know what I'm gonna do? Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go outside, and when K Street finds out that I'm available, there's gonna be five fucking law firms, top drawer, who are gonna be dying to hire me. They're gonna be jumping up and down like little kids who need to go to the can. Let's fire your ear off. Then you should have no reason to be unhappy. Absolutely. <laughs> Nice piece. You playing cowboy now with those Indians? You've kept me waiting. Well, why'd you get the shooter? You didn't tell me about your disbarment. Not to mention your fucking bankruptcy. Not to mention the fucking mobbed up connections in St. Martin. Not to mention the fucking murder of your own fucking mother! Well, I was gonna tell when? you. When? 2020? You were a dangerous man, Adam. That's why I've got the fucking gun. Okay, so go ahead, show me! Get, Get in my house, you're a fucking mess. You know that? You ought to wear a sign around your neck as a public service. Beware, Adam Kadan, fucking menace! Where's Pam? With the kids, I sent her to see her folks. So you're the married dude and I'm like the hot underage mistress? Jack, you gotta relax. Maybe even psychologize, okay? You gotta ask yourself, what does Gus Bullis want? He wants to make millions of dollars and keep his fucking business, that's what he wants. What Bullis wants is to keep his company and sell it at the same time. He wants both. So how do we give him both? What if we quietly kick back Bullis's 10%, call it a consulting fee? How does that get us the missing piece of finance? Adam, I'm Look, already- Jack, we're just a few deal points away now. Bullis wants to keep his piece of the business under the table. That's against the law. He'll have to take our IOUs. 
For 20 million, that's a hell of a lot of IOUs, Adam. Now you're gonna have to find another way to pay him. Trust me to handle the formalities, sweetheart. Jack, the boats can be ours after the weekend, and your money problems are over. Just keep it legal, okay? I have a better idea. Why don't you show me your pussy? Gonad left handed. Oh, come on. 25 k You are a cheap whore. Come on, it's 50 at least. Look at it. It's halfway across the tarmac. All right, 50 k You'll never make it. All right, here we go. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Booyah! Woo! 50 Gs, G. Oh, Mikey. <laughs> What's the matter, brother? Hemorrhage and money like Niagara falls out of my ass. Sun sale, the restaurant, the school, they've all got me strapped, bouncing checks all over the place. And now I'm really out on a limb with the second restaurant. What the hell do you need with the second restaurant? Well, one of them's got to be kosher, right? Oh, come on. There isn't a decent kosher restaurant anywhere near K Street. So? We need more clients. You need to chill out, dude. I got a phone call this morning from Chief Noquat of the Texas Kickapoo. Noquat of the Kickapoo? You're kidding. We're golden, baby. He wants to meet with Bush about oil drilling rights. I told him he wants to get her done. It's going to cost him a million a month retainer. Can you get that in the end zone? He loves what we've done with the Chippewa, baby. Oh, awesome! <laughs> if that's true, man, you make him show you the money fast! Show me the Come money! Me! Do that. Give me five. Keep it under the radar. Congressman, I was on the phone this very day with the governor of Texas, who told me personally that all of his congressional districts are going to vote no on the bill. That is correct. Uh, Congressman, look, my, uh, my mother is very ill. She's on the other line. Could I call you back? Yes, thank you, sir. We did it. We're in. We're in. We're in like Flynn. Look at that. Who's Vegas? Who's Vegas? Oh. Get it, Jack. <laughs> Vegas, baby! <laughs> Glad to see you're enjoying the new digs. You is the man, Oscar. Glad to have you at Greenberg, Jack. Along with the Kushitas, the Choctaw, and the Chippewa. And don't forget the Kickaboo, too. Mikey, baby! Chippewa Election Central, dude, in beautiful Saginaw, Michigan. Oh, man, que pasta maquito. It is perfect timing because you know why. We just closed Sun Sale. We own it. Oh, sweet! <laughs> Dude, our Quan is so flowing, Daddy O. How goes it down there with all the troglodytes? The what? Troglodyte. It's. Fucking look it up. What am I, a dictionary? Dude, listen, listen. The slate of eight rocked it today. We're in. Well, what are you saying? We won? We did it. We did it. Bernie Sprague is out. Poncho is in. Consider us hired by the Chippewa, dude. You are gold, you dog, when it rains and pours. All right, now, we got to start talking about billing figures. I want 20 million from these monkeys right away. Yes, big chief rainmaker. Oh, dude, you have to know Sprague is super pissed about this whole deal, OK? He took it really hard. Oh, yeah. What is that job he's got? Uh, Parks and Recreation Commissioner. 
Well, doesn't the council control it? Why don't you just tell Pasha to eliminate the position? You got it, man. Trim unnecessary fat from the budget, uh, fiscal discipline, you got it. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. Maybe it's bad karma to kick a guy when he's down. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Not only are we gonna kick him when he's down, we're gonna kick him till he passes out, dude. And then we're gonna beat him over the head with a baseball bat, roll him up into an old rug, and kick him off a cliff into the pounding surf below. <laughs> Go take a jog, buddy. Mr. Abramoff's office. Yeah, run, get Jack. Excuse me. Who's calling? Bernie. Bernie. Bernie who? Tell him I'm a rabbi on the synagogue board. Uh, Mr. Abramoff's in a meeting. Uh, can he return? Uh, tell him he's going to have company soon. Spritzers you drink with her, this is business, so fuck her. I'm not calling her back. Uh, did you see the electrician up there? He said that he would be here for. What do I look like, the hell? You're so useless. Where the hell do you think you're going? Uh, I'm pretty sure I told you I have a business meeting, huh? <sighs> a business meeting? What, in your flip-flops? How dumb do you think I am? What? I have business to discuss with Brian. You have business with Brian. <laughs> I love you. But you're getting kind of nuts, you know that? I gotta send Brian to Michigan to help out with the Chippewa deal. And what part of your dubious dealings with the Chippewa is Brian a party to? Maybe Brian is helping us fight the good fight, okay? Oh, God, why do I waste my time here with you and these Delaware weenies? Oh, yeah, because you'd rather be at some gay elitist dinner party in Georgetown, right? You bet I would. Later. Mike. <sighs> 4,200 square feet. Isn't that just overdoing it a little bit, Adam? Hey, how big is your place? Yeah, well, I got a family of seven. Well, I got people, too. It's a real beauty deal here. Why shouldn't I have a few perks? Well, just try to use a modicum of self-control. Is that possible? This isn't exactly Manhattan. I'm dying of boredom here. Yeah, Adam, listen to me. I just spoke to the money people. The last financials you sent over don't make any goddamn sense. I think that's maybe my pizza. Adam. Avreo Pusti. I kick your ass, OK? I'm gonna have to call you back. Adam, don't hang. Go, 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 go. Hey, hey, see you back in the Oh, oh. Twelve people here, Tony, Nick, Dimitri. You know, I I'm not the welfare department, okay? Finding your relatives new jobs is not my gig. My family. They all move here to Florida. Because of me. What happens to them now? They starve? You know what? I'm really not having as much fun here as it might look like, okay? And I don't need your family around skimming the take. 
Listen to me, you dumb Jew bastard! The sick of That wire transfer was a phony! My nephew, my sister-in-law, all of them! They all go back on the payroll tomorrow! Now you listen to me! You're out, Gus! You don't like it, sue me! I'm not gonna sue you! I'm gonna kill you! Since my previous statement, I have come to learn that Sunsail Casinos now finds itself under new ownership. The new owner has a reputation for honesty and integrity. Adam Kadan is most well known for his successful enterprise, Quickie Mattress. But he is also well known as a respected member of his team. While Mr. Kadan certainly has his hands full in his efforts to clean up Sun Sales' reputation, his track record in business leads me to believe that he will easily transform Sun Sales from a questionable enterprise to an outstanding establishment that the, game, the uh, gaming community can be proud of. I can't hear you! I haven't seen him this morning. Oh, I have some dry cleaning for him to pick up. Oh, I'll take it. Mike? 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 Excuse me, does Abramoff know I'm here? Sir, I already told you Mr. Abramoff is unavailable. So if I were you, I wouldn't waste my time. Huh. Dude, seriously, I'm worried about Emily. She hasn't returned my call since yesterday. Well, you sleep in the bed you make, my friend. Oh, thanks for the empathy. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, well, listen. You can win anyone over. People always negotiate. All you have to do is just make Bill you sensible. Oh, yeah, great. Thanks, Jack. You know what? I'm sure he's going to be thrilled about the bogus wire transfer. I'm, I'm serious, Jack. I, I, what am I going to say about Kadan's phony wire transfer? Gus, just let me personally apologize for Adam Kadan. He is a social menace. You're going to apologize for that phony wire transfer, too? What, what, what phony wire transfer? Holy shit! Gus, that was Kadan's department. Had nothing to do with us, okay? There is nothing that I detest more than the stench of lies, okay? He is a is an errand boy sent by grocery clerks to collect the bill. All right, Jack and I have your cash, and I can give it to you right now. We're all out of sunset. As far as I'm concerned, that's it. Whoa, 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 Gus. We're reasonable people here, okay? Let's 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 talk, talk to about my lawyers, all right? Well, you listen, Jack and I would like to settle this without lawyers. Okay? How would that happen? Gus, our new clients, the Chippewa Tribe of Michigan, just made me the highest paid lobbyist in our nation's history, okay? You know why? Because we help them, Gus, and they help us, and we help you, you help us, you help them, they help you. That's how it works. They help who? What? Listen, the bottom line is we have serious financial liquidity now, and we want the opportunity to prove to you, Gus, that we can take your 11 votes and turn them into a fleet of 30 around the world, okay? We're talking about tripling, possibly even quadrupling our income in six months. A, a floating casino empire here, dude, and we want you to be a major part of that. All right, we can make this happen. I don't want Kadan. He's a disgusting, fat asshole. The man broke me in front of Gus. So Kadan just disappeared from Sunset. How? Jack works him like a monkey on a stick, all right? You let us handle that. Your pen face makes me want to puke. Well, this is the second time I've been a victim of family violence. I had to hire a gorilla. Oh. Oh, no offense. Long take. I got a court order. Gus Bullets can't come near the boats. I've rented an armored plated car because of that psychotic. Well, did you ever think that he might be mad at you for giving him a check for $23 million that's absolutely fucking worthless? 
I'm talking about my physical safety. His people are moving our slots off our boats. He's capable of all manner of strong arm shit. Well, just don't do anything stupid. Hey, I think you broke something. Well, Adam, we break something, we fix it, right? He is the all-time champ, bastard motherfucker of all time. And I think you'll agree, it's time Gus Bullis was gone from Sunsail. Ow! Let us go talk to him. I know how you talk to people. You're as subtle as a fucking chainsaw. Look at you! You all right? I can even get through the front door. Something interesting happened with Walter over at the casino. He did an annual audit. Oh, yeah. Nothing matched. The accountant said that none of Abramoff's figures add up. We're paying for hundreds of thousands worth of lunches at his restaurant. $200,000 for his Redskin Skybox. But it's well known he helped other tribes save billions of dollars in taxes. <laughs> and that so-called grassroots campaign against the Jenna? It was made up of three people handing out a few dozen Kinkos flyers. The guy took us for a bunch of suckers. Son of a bitch is no good. He's now preying on the Kickapoo and the Choctaw. about taking care of things. So I'll, I'll even give you a financial piece of the casino. I, I just don't want to take any more chances with this guy. I don't know. Tony, we're old friends. Don't make me beg. You know, I had an uncle who was half Jewish. He used to relax me. Give, give me a hand. Give me a hand. Palm up. Palm up. He used to go. Keys a little, mys a little. These are the money. Fuck. <laughs> you scared me and relaxed me at the same time. Anyway, from what you tell me, this goof, this fucking Greek deserves a broken leg at least. No, no, no. Violence sickens me. I hit him in the fucking head. No, no, no shooting, please. Look, you, you, you'll come down there and you'll be a... a what? Uh, the ship's catering director? What do I know about cooking? So you learn to make gyros. Can it be that difficult? Gyros? What's a gyros? Heroes. Listen to me. I'm telling you now like I would tell my own son. I've been in this business 50 years. The correct move. He's too black. No, Tony, listen. You should know there's important people involved. Got people high up, way high up, and there's a lot of money involved, hundreds of millions of dollars. Everything is very, very, very sensitive. Okay. Got it covered. Got it covered. What about Abramoff? Is he okay with this? Jack? He'll never come down. He's in DC. Besides, I got the guy baffled. <laughs> okay, I need 40 grand right away. I just want you to make sure Gus Bullis never attacks me again with a fucking ballpoint. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> fucking pen. It's not funny. I, I, listen. Why don't you go on a vacation? Don't worry. I'll be nice. <laughs> Jack, the IMF is never going to allow the Russians in until Putin deals with the human rights issues. It's... Come on, you don't think we have influence I in Moscow? I don't care. I'm sick and tired of waiting. I come all the way back from Michigan. I know the son of a bitch is back here someplace. Excuse me, sir. sir. Excuse me. Sir. Get your hands you off me. Don't talk to this asshole. You have no sir. right to go fire in something like talk about the 20 million you took off my people. You and Scanlon. Never mind hiding in your goddamn office. Sir. Look, I came all the way sir. from Michigan to talk to you. <laughs> from the day on, Jack. I'm gonna make you my hobby. Who is that guy? Bad karma. Anyway, I know people that know Putin. Miss Miller. I'm Agent Hatton. Please come in. Uh, you have some.
something you wish to report? I do. Ms. Miller, is this a federal issue? You bet. It's a little embarrassing, Jack. Look, he's a Jewish kid from the West Bank who's tired of having Hamas lob rockets into his neighborhood. He wanted to build a sniper school that helped him out. With a shipment of a thousand night vision goggles? Okay, so we make a lot of money, right? Don't you think it's our obligation to help, too? It's good karma. You bought them from the Russians, yeah, Jack. I got a lot of good contacts in Moscow now. Jack, Newsweek is calling you a Zionist thug. You got that Time Magazine article? The same week that Newsweek calls me a Zionist thug, Time Magazine accuses me of supporting Islamic terrorism because I gave money to Grover to help him mobilize Republican Muslims in Ohio. The press are maniacs, you know that. A lot of people are talking, Jack. You're drawing too much attention to our profession. Bunch of wusses. Jack, this isn't the 90s anymore. Look around, it's post 9-11. Bill Clinton isn't running around boasting about budget surpluses and drinking Krug out of crystal flutes. Bill Clinton is the best thing that ever happened to Washington, and I say that as a Republican. Let me spell it out for you. K Street doesn't like the limelight, Jack. The partners and I are giving you a warning. You're wrong on this. Susan Schmidt, Washington Post. Susan. Emily Miller. I'd like to talk to you about Mike Scanlon of the Chippewa Indians. 270 Street. Hey, who the hell asked you to sit down, Pop? Mr. Bullis. You don't return phone calls. Yeah, well, I work for a living. I'm busy. Well, I mean, you got a nice operation here. But it's rude, see? But I have a crackage. I'm starving. Who the fuck are you? I should have returned your calls. I'm working out for Mr. Kadam now. His interests are my interests. He's with me. Adam fucking Kadam can suck my prick. Really? Yeah, really. I know Goomba Wap is gonna waste my time. Well, maybe I should explain to you who I am before this goes too far. I know who you are. You're the senior citizen fucking Al Capone. I'll cut your fucking throat. Okay, Gramps? Oh, okay. All right, fine, I'll go. I don't bother you no more. <laughs> Mr. Gordo. Listen, trust me, Chief. Bernie Sprague is becoming a problem. Yeah? Your guy, Scallion, told me to fire him. Scanlon, look, can you just give him his job back? It doesn't exist anymore. Scanlon eliminated it, right? Well, look, you know, I can't... Musharraf, I've met Musharraf, okay? Newt Gingrich knows my name. I don't need this guy. Can you just give him some job, get him off my back? Hey, Jack, guess what? What? I got the new H2 in metallic red. It's fully loaded, and it is fucking beautiful. Great. Hope you enjoy it. Enid! There he is. He ain't such a tough guy now, is he? Gyro. <laughs> yeah, let's try to make that fat Jew happy for a change. Forget he died. If he doesn't do what we say with Sun Sail, it'll be him next. <laughs> Baby. 
baby? Yeah? You here, baby? <laughs> and over here we have a beautiful portrait by Aaron Schickler of our 35th president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Adam, Adam, what are you talking about? Are you nuts? You said you wanted Gus Bull is gone from Sunsail. Five shots in the head. Five shots in the head. That's what you think I was suggesting, you fucking moron? Well, I asked him to be my caterer, and I whacked the guy. Anyway, you were over a thousand miles away. They can't connect us to it. Are you serious? Do you have any idea that the grand jury is sitting right now discussing fraud on the wire transfer? God, why did I even get involved in Sunsail? What was I thinking? Why they? So now we got blood on our hands? Oh, no, 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 no. They're not coming after me. They're coming after you, Adam. You know why? Because I know those guys at Justice, and they jerk off thinking about guys like you. My right-handed God, Jack, I wish I never met you. Fuck you. Fuck you, you stupid goddamn fatty. What? You're the one who's fat. You fat fuck. Fake you fuck fat. Eat me, you goddamn fat cocksucker. Sorry. Little issue on the hill. Presidential portrait collection. And what? what? Mr. Abramoff, Congressman DeLay needs you to come to his office. Yes, what if you'll tell Tom that I'm currently in the White House about to see the President of the United States? I have Chief Nokawat of the Kickapoo with me. Congressman DeLay says you should drop whatever you're doing and come to his office immediately. The President will see you now. Yeah, I have to call you back. Mr. President. How you doing there, buff guy? I keep on working out. Mike, Mike, listen to me, all right? Why, listen, this could be very serious. Why is the Washington Post calling delay about the Chippewa? His secretary says he's freaking out about a story they're running tomorrow. Jack, me and Emily broke up. Oh, well, you know, buddy, you got my condolences, but, you know, he's about to rip my head off. No, 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 listen. Emily found out about the stewardess, Crystal. But this could be serious, Mike. Pay attention. No, Jack, you're not listening. She found Crystal's panties in my dry cleaning and she got super fucking pissed and went to the FBI, dude. She knew everything about Gimme Five, Jack. She had no mercy. You told Emily Miller about Gimme Five? How could you be so fucking stupid? We were getting married! She wanted us to share everything. You should have been thinking of me! I'm your fucking priority! Oh, right, right! So when I'm in the pen, catching it from some big black dude named Buster, I'll be thinking of Jack fucking Abramoff! My uh, secretary told you about how concerned I am about this, uh, this story coming out in tomorrow's Washington Post. Look, they're probably going to bury it in the national section. I mean, <laughs> Indian gambling is a very dull subject. What me. in the hell were you thinking, boy? Tom, I don't know what this story is about. I have... You listen to me! I did not claw my way out of the mosquito-infested flatlands of Laredo, Texas to become majority leader of the United States Congress, only to be brought down by a no good lying. Uh -huh. Jack, you remember uh, Reverend Mueller from my home district, don't you? Yes. Take a seat, Mr. Abramoff. You got a lot to answer for, Jack. And there's just so much I don't understand. But first, I think it's important that we uh, sit here together as men of faith and pray. Reverend? Jack?
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, dear Lord, as we sit here under the shadow of a gathering storm, Honey, I don't mean to change the subject, but when did you start smoking? It is the Sabbath, you know. Jack, have I not always been straight with you? Not always the good mother and devoted wife? Of course you have. And I think you should just, you know, go to whoever, confess, and like get it over with. Confess? I have no idea who killed Poulos. Who's gonna believe you, Jack? And what about all of this Indian gaming stuff? Honey, I haven't done anything that every other lobbyist in Washington does, right? Charging high fees. Everybody knows I saved those Indian tribes billions of dollars. Jack, they're saying that you were hiding the money you were making by splitting it with Scanlon under the table. <sighs> Honey, that's no different than what Ralph... Look, that's just a technicality, really. Look, I'm gonna sell the restaurants, I'm gonna hire the most aggressive lawyer I can find. Those assholes out there are accusing me of selling access. What the fuck do you think everybody on K Street does? We all sell access. That doesn't make it right, Jack. God damn it, stop justifying it. It's all bullshit. Maybe you're right, honey. I just got caught up in all of it. Oh, I should have never gotten in business with someone like your dad. And I got greedy with the tribes. And I worry now. I worry so much that I've let down God. Me and my kin. <laughs> what about letting down? <laughs> friends, Jack. None. All we have are people you do business with. I have a statement I'd like to make at this time. The good Lord has always told me the difference between right and wrong. All I can tell you now is that if someone is trading on my good name to get clients or make money, it is unconscionable, it is illegal, and he should stop I immediately. I am absolutely outraged by the dishonest and duplicitous words and actions of Jack Abramoff. NBC News in depth tonight, a former super lobbyist in Washington. Lobbyist named Jack Abramoff, MSNBC's chief one. are some of the biggest players in the conservative They believe revolution. corruption and illegal activities are a problem. Mushroom in the multiple investigations. Indian tribes, buying members of Congress. Potentially bad news for leading members of Congress and executive to be the, the biggest Congressional scandal is to sell big trouble for some big time lawmakers. Well, there are a lot of people scared. This whole thing's turning into the Enron of lobbying. How the hell are we gonna cope with that? Look what happened with those accountants for Enron. They failed to cooperate and the government took away their license to do business. I figure we make reparations to the Tiguas, Choctaws, the Chippewas, and the Agua Caliente. 
That ain't hay. Hey, guys. You're, you're costing us 70 million, Jack. Oh, that much? Do you know how much money I saved? Look, those Jack, they're Indian saying that you and Scanlon defrauded those tribes of the 70 million. That money's got to come from somewhere. Who the hell do you think's going to pay for this? We are sitting in shit here, Jack. Do you have any idea, any of you, how much money I give away every day? How soon can you be out of your office? Jack! I need a couple of weeks. You have 30 minutes. For God's sake, you're on the front page of the Washington Post. Again? Is it above the fold? Friend Simon Bowler at Paramount. Paramount Pictures, it's a movie studio in Hollywood. Call him and tell him I want to set up a meeting because I've got a great movie idea that I want to pitch to him. You want to hear it? And you know what? Folks in Washington, they love movies, even if they pretend that they don't. I mean, every week, George Bush calls me to ask me what movie should I be screening. <laughs> At the White House? <laughs> You're damn right. So you've been getting a, a lot of press lately. You feeling the heat? Ah, uh, no, no, not at all. It'll all blow over. It's par for the course. So you're here to pitch us an idea for a movie? based on the Old Testament, a biblical epic, a kind of retelling of the Ten Commandments, only this time it's called Pharaoh's Thorn, all right? Now, here's the great modern twist. It's kind of a born identity action like Moses, leading his people out of Egypt. Russell Crowe, perfect for Moses. I think we can get Ridley to direct it. Now listen, man, this film is epic in scale. Cinemascope, big story. Russell Crowe, leading his people out of Egypt to the promised land, happy ending. Yes. Jack Abramoff, this is Agent Patterson with the FBI. Yes. individuals, groups, and corporations to lobby the federal government is protected by the right to petition in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Huh? So what's the problem? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Very nice that you finally have decided to cooperate. Look, I know you wanted me to do it for a while, but we finally talked about it as a family, and that's the decision we've reached. Right, there's one tiny problem. What's that? You're a little late. Michael Scanlon beat you to the punch. He negotiated a signed deal with Justice on Tuesday. 
Does that mean Jack can't make a deal? I'm sorry, Pam. They don't need him. They don't need you. He kept track of everything. Emails, phone conversations, the lot. He was saying how the two of you scammed the tribe of almost $20 million. The two of you conspired to bribe Nay, the trip to Scotland, and meals at your restaurants. It's all out there. They're calling it a stream of things of value. Well, that is bullshit. It's a technicality, and he knows it. Yeah, well, it's all out there. Jack. He's giving all this shit to justice? Well, you know what? Your good buddy used you as his get out of jail freak. Now, I'm afraid I got more good news for you folks. The Indian Affairs Committee is asked to make formal inquiries. They're going to subpoena you before a Senate hearing. A Senate hearing? Jack has helped half of the Senate get reelected, and now they're going to. Isn't there someone we can call? Who's the head of the Indian Affairs Committee? <laughs> John McCain. What are you going to do? I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell him I was doing my goddamn job. That's what I was doing, my job. Jack, you're not going to play nice. Do you understand that? I strongly suggest that you go in there and you plead the fifth. The fifth? I might as well say I'm guilty. I will not plead the fifth. I'd like to thank you, Senator McCain. Thank you, Senator Jarvis. I want to thank you and the vice chairman and staff for your tremendous effort on behalf of this investigation and your continued dedication and effort of many years on behalf of Native Americans. Mr. Chairman, etched in the history of our great nation is a long and lamentable chapter about the exploitation of Native Americans. It began with the sale of Manhattan and has continued ever since. Mr. Abramoff, you had a relationship with a number of Native tribes, did you not? Is it fair to say you felt these tribes were gullible and naive? Senator, on the basis of the Fifth Amendment, I respectfully decline to answer the question. This tribe was never told about the secret scheme that allowed Jack Abramoff and Michael Scanlon to take over $40 million for services dubiously rendered. Senator, I respectfully invoke the privileges as stated. You can continue dodging questions, Mr. Abramoff, yet you rip off my fellow Native Americans. You refer to them as monkeys and troglodytes. Senator, I respectfully invoke the privileges as stated. This is the most extraordinary pattern of abuse and criminal conduct that has been before this committee the entire 18 years I have served here. Mr. Abramoff, you've proven yourself to be callous and to only have been all about the money. Do you not feel any shame? Senator, I respectfully invoke the privileges as stated. While these accounts of unscrupulous men are sadly familiar, the tale we hear today is not. What sets this tale apart, what makes it truly extraordinary, is the extent and degree of the apparent exploitation and deceit. Mr. Abramoff, have you nothing to say for yourself? Senator, I respectfully invoke the privileges as a No. Jack. No, I no longer wish to invoke the privileges. Jack. I have something to say and I'm going to say it. Jack. No, no, no. In fact, Jack. What are you if doing? we want to talk all about the money, why don't we start with the four or $5,000 checks I personally handed to Senator Jarvis for his re-election campaign, and we know what that money was all about, don't we, Senator? Or how about you, Senator Burnham? I donated $30,000 to influence your vote to keep the Marianas open for business. Remember? What about you, Senator McCain? You should be sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in right now. For years, you've taken tens of thousands of dollars from lobbyists just like me, representing competing Indian tribes who wanted to open up their own casinos that would have shut my clients down. Turn her out of order. This man, this son of a bitch, is guilty. And if he's allowed to go free, then there's something really wrong going on here. Sir, you are out of order. Out of order? You're out of order. You're out of order. You're all out of order. This whole Senate hearing is out of order. Please help. I got a whole panel of senators who love
enough to take money from anybody who's got a fucking bank account. And you call me a fraud, you fucking hypocrites. You fucking hypocrites. You ought to stand for something. You should protect people. Hold on, hold on. I have just completed my opening statement. Mr. Abramoff. Mr. Abramoff. Jack. Senator, I respectfully invoke the privileges as stated. And I'd say to you, Mr. Abramoff, shame on you. <laughs> Mr. President, at the end of the day, I was vilified as Satan and ordered to pay restitution of more than $21 million to the Indian tribes, as well as $1.7 million to the IRS. Adam Kadam was sentenced in Florida in March 2006 to six years in prison for conspiracy and fraud in the purchase of the Sunsail Casino's gambling fleet. Bob Ney was sentenced in January 2008 to two and a half years in prison for allegedly taking bribes from me. In 2005, Anthony Muscatello and Anthony Ferrari were charged with the murder of Gus Boulos. In 2006, Tom DeLay stepped down as majority leader and resigned his seat in Congress after being indicted by a Texas grand jury. In 2009, he appeared on the ABC hit show, Dancing with the Stars. My two old buds, Grover and Ralph, they never faced charges of any kind. And poor Kevin Ring, well, he's looking at five years in federal prison. As for Mike, well, he's still free and has taken up work as a Rehoboth Beach lifeguard as he continues to stay out of jail while cooperating with investigators. Yeah, so far. Looks like. Thanks for coming, Jack. Ham would be furious with me if she knew I was even talking to you. We're still friends, right? I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. Right? You broke my heart. Or as Harry Truman once said, if you want a friend in Washington, D.C., get a dog. <laughs> Jack, you have no idea how much pressure they put on me at Justice. I'm sorry, bro. That's OK. My lawyer tells me you only beat me to it by about two minutes. The student becomes the master. Your serve. You're a good kid, Mikey. I'll miss you. I was sentenced to six years at a federal correctional institution in Cumberland, Maryland. Pam and the kids visit me on weekends. I spend the rest of my time leading a Jewish prayer group. Now, guy, 
guys, you all have a story, right? And teaching a screenwriting class to my fellow inmates. Act two, a reversal of that That's why you look at me like psycho. Occasionally, I'll find time to throw darts at a photograph of George W. Bush. It wasn't for all the money I helped pour into Florida. That idiot would never have left Texas, and I think you'd agree we'd all be better for it. And despite the fact that the Justice Department recommended my sentence be reduced by two years for fully cooperating with investigators, on his last day in office, Bush refused to even consider it. You see, to this day, I remain the Republicans' worst nightmare. Not because I'm an icon to an era most people would prefer to forget, but because once I'm out of here, God has given me a new mission to remind the world what a bunch of hypocrites they all are. You see, Mr. President, it's time to think out of the box. I know it's a moonshot, but in writing you this letter to a former president who understands very well how the game is played, I hope you might see my point of view and consider making an appeal to the right Democrats who might find it useful to help me so in turn, I can help all of you. Time's up, Jack. Why? Because my name is Jack Abramoff, and I work out every day. Before, as an individual who has been steadfast to our principles, risen as high as Tom DeLay. Tom DeLay is the most effective, he was the most effective whip in the House of Representatives, and I would say he's the most effective majority leader, and thank God Tom DeLay is the majority leader in the House. Hear, hear. Hear, hear. I just uh, just add one more one more piece to it because I think uh, we we really need to hear from Mr. Delay, but Tom Delay is who all of us want to be when we grow up. You're here. Congressman.